Thanks for rolling up. I'm Two Blunt Marley. And this is Certified Pothead. Smoke the door. One of my uh late evening spliffs. You know we about to do Bird Club. We about to take a look at these cannabis conspiracy theories. Which I like to call cannabis conspiracy theories. Today's theory involves Stonehenge. You know, people often say the truth is out there. But what if it's right here in plain sight? Hidden in the shadows and rocks. What if I told you that Stonehenge, that iconic stone circle perched in the British countryside. Cause that was a weird, weird way to say that. In the British countryside. Wasn't just some ancient ritual site or celestial calendar. But instead the world's first cannabis cultivation guide. I know this sounds a bit like something a stoner might come up with after a few too many hits. But hear me out. There's more to those towering stones than meets the eye. Ancient civilizations weren't exactly known for sharing their secrets with us. No, they preferred to hide their wisdom in places where it could only be unlocked by the truly in the know. And what better place to store their knowledge than in the very rocks of the earth itself. Stonehenge wasn't just built to look impressive folks. It was meticulously designed as a functional stone code, pun intended, blueprint for the ancient art of cannabis cultivation. Don't believe me? Strap in because we're about to roll through the evidence together. First, here's a riddle for you. Stones we are and stone will be set in circles, ancient and free. But who were we to haul such weight and build this place before our fate? Imagine for a moment that you're standing in the heart of Stonehenge. The sun is just beginning to rise, casting long, lazy shadows across the stones, stretching them like melted butter on warm toast. These aren't just any shadows, though. Nah, bruh. They're like nature's own time stamps. For ancient farmers, those shadows were just pretty patterns. They were vital instructions. When the first rays of sunlight hit the stone circle, it was like Mother Nurture, Mother, <laughs> words, Mother Nature herself saying, all right, it's go time, folks. But it wasn't just any go time. The way the sunlight hit each stone at different times of the day provided a detailed schedule for when to plant, when to water, and when to harvest. It was like the stones themselves were clocking in to work. And let me tell you, these ancient stoners were hard working. We're talking about a 24 hour job with the sun as your boss. Shadows were like shadow puppets in a play, each one revealing the next stage of growth from seedling to harvest. It wasn't just a changing position of the sun. It was like being in a perpetual stoner dream where light and shadow were constantly whispering, hey, it's grow time. Here's another riddle for you. I stretch and shrink as day moves by, marking time beneath the sky. I dance with light in measured ways, telling secrets of lengthening days. What am I? Now, most people looking at Stonehenge think big rocks must have been some ancient ritual thing. But what if I told you those big rocks were actually big clues? Each one a vital component in the grand scheme of things, perfectly aligned to reflect the growing seasons. The outer stones mark the beginning of the growing cycle, planting time when you put your seeds in the ground and wait for the magic to begin. Think of these stones as the ancient equivalent of the farmer's almanac, but, you know, with way more drama and rock music. As the seasons pass, the stone's shadows will grow and shrink, much like the way the plants themselves would stretch and recede in a growing cycle. If the sun was the clock and the stones were the gears, and those gears, well, they weren't just ticking away, they were buzzing with purpose. You'd almost hear them whispering, what are those plants? Now prove them, now harvest. Each shadow cast was like an ancient grow guide written in stone, literally written in stone. It was as if the rocks themselves were given the ultimate growing tips. Use compost, don't overwater. Now picture this, you're chilling on your porch, joint in hand, watching the sun slowly dip behind the trees. You smoked enough to see the world through a different lens and suddenly the shadows start to dance in ways they never did before. The world around you shifts like your brain is receiving secret transmissions from the universe. You start thinking, hey, maybe everything is connected. Maybe those shadows, they mean something. What if that's what the ancient builders of Stonehenge felt too? I mean, sure, they didn't have joints, but I bet they had something. Those stones, those long, jagged edges could catch the sunlight in ways that spoke to them. Maybe they didn't know exactly how to understood stand it. Uh, words. Maybe they didn't know exactly how they understood it. 
but they felt it. The sun, the moon, the stars, they weren't just shining. They were speaking in code. And the builders, they were listening. Every shadow was like a signal, guiding them through the seasons, through the cultivation of life. It wasn't just about getting high, although, honestly, that was probably part of it. It was about getting in tune with nature, becoming one with the world around them. Riddle time. I'm set in stone, yet I grow no roots. Standing silent as time shifts its suits. I tell the seasons in shadowed hues. My only language is that which you choose. Here's where things get wild. Stonehenge wasn't just about marking the seasons. It was about aligning with the stars too. That's right, those ancient stoners had the ultimate star map embedded in the stones themselves. Each alignment, each stone, wasn't just about tracking the sun. It was about understanding the constellations that ruled the skies and influenced the earth below. When the constellation of Orion made its grand entrance in the night sky, the builders knew it was time to begin harvesting. The stars, the sun, and the moon, they weren't just cosmic light bulbs. They were guides for the ancient cultivators. In Stonehenge, it was their sacred GPS system. Follow the stars, it whispered, and you'll know when to pick those buds, when to let them grow. Like a cosmic road map, Stonehenge's stones were locked in place to align with celestial events, ensuring that everything, every harvest, was perfectly timed. Here's another riddle. Though centuries pass, I guard the unknown. Many have wondered, yet truth is not shown. I stood through storms, sun, and rain. A moment to both mystery and game. What am I? So what have we learned, Stony? Stonehenge. The mysterious stone circle that has perplexed historians, archaeologists, and stoners alike. Wasn't just an ancient playground for druids or astronomical observatory. That is not the word. That's not how you say that word. Astronomical observatory. No, bruh. Stonehenge was the original Green Thumb headquarters. An ancient grow calendar encoded in stone built by those who knew how to tap into the cycles of life. Every stone was a chapter, every shadow a verse in the grand cosmic grow guide. The builders were not just farmers, they were cosmic gardeners. <laughs> cosmic gardeners working in harmony with the universe to plant, nurture, and harvest. And all these years later, we're still here gazing at their work, wondering how they could have possibly known so much. Next time you see a stoner gazing up at the stars, wondering when to hit the ball, remember, it's not just about the high, it's about the timing. And who knows, maybe Stonehenge was just trying to tell us that one stone at a time. The answers to the riddles, the builders, the shadow, the calendar, the monument. I'll see you on the next one, bro.